Hey everybody, welcome to the part 5 of getting started with glue for beginners using PySpark. This is part number 5. In the first part, again, I'm just refreshing if anybody is connecting in the middle of the video. The first part was what, what is glue? Why is it so trending, right? Second part, we essentially brush up your memory on PySpark syntax. The third part was a simple S3 crawler, crawler through a console. The fourth part was infrastructure code. And now we're going to write a very simple glue job. The job here is uh, like this. We essential in the part three and part four, we made a catalog for our S3, right? We're gonna read the data. We're gonna clean the data. We're gonna basically drop duplicates, okay? And then we're gonna write the new uh, cleansed data into an S3 folder. So again, very, very basic, hello world I'm doing, right? And then in the next part, after this part, we're gonna write the infrastructure code to deploy a glue script uh, basically through serverless uh, framework, right? The next part will be scheduling stuff, right? So every video will be progressing, you know, we'll be adding stuff in the modules, okay? So yeah, let's get uh, rock and roll. Uh, so now I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, so first of all, I want you guys to go to the glue console. And again, if you're gonna perform all these exercises, remember uh, glue is not a free stuff. You will be charged for, uh, you know, the workers and, and, and all that stuff. So make sure to terminate stuff when you're not using it. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm on the job section and I, actually I wanna start up an interactive notebook for you so I can show you, right? So I'm gonna close this, close this. Here, notebooks. Um, again, this I'm doing this just to like teach you, right? So I'm gonna write glue job. I'll select the I am rule that is I am lab three, and then I'm gonna start my notebook. Again, um, this will uh, incur a cost, okay? As I said, right? So do make sure to uh, terminate the inst instances when you're not using. So the job is pretty uh, easy. So here is the data, right? In the part three, we did catalog the data, right? So if you observe, uh, we have a duplicate, right? So for example, uh, so this one, yeah. So for example, Laura Harris, this is a duplicate, right? So we wanna write a job to essentially remove duplicates, right? Again, there is a built-in function called remove duplicates, but I'm not gonna use that because I wanna refresh our memory on Spark 2. Okay, so I'll try my best to increase the font size. Okay, hopefully this is visible. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm creating a Spark session here, right? On on here, I'm as you can see, I'm creating a Spark session, and here it's waiting. And once it's done, then we'll uh, you know uh, start writing code here. Okay. Again, I've already done all these labs before the video, so I'll I'll use my code snippets, and all these code snippets will be there in the description as well. So do not worry. <laughs> all right. So this might take a while because it's gonna spin up an instance for us on the cloud. But uh, please make sure that you watch the prior videos because all these videos are uh, connected to each other, right? So uh, usually it doesn't take that long. Uh, it's taking a little longer right now for some reason. So I'll restart, I'll try to rerun the notebook. Uh, hopefully that works and I'm gonna stop and I'll maybe try. Yeah, some s something, Hold on. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to stop my notebook and I'm going to provision that again. Okay. So maybe, you know, uh, just got to wait for that to, to, to start. Again, we won't be using notebook. Notebook is primarily mostly for teaching purposes, right? So hence I am using notebook to show you code, uh, execution of the code line by line. Okay. So let's run. Um, now again, it says waiting. Uh, so let's wait <laughs> until uh, it's able to spin up the resources for us. And I'll just say, just wanna make sure. Uh, okay, so I think the notebook is ready. Here you can see the, the session has been created. Now the first thing that we will do is, if you observe, I'll also use my snippets heavily. We do have a Spark instance now, right? So the first thing we wanna do is in the part three and part four, we made a catalog, right? So here you can see I have a database called LearnDB, right? And I also have a crawler, right? We can either uh, read the data from a catalog or we can directly uh, read the data from S3. Um, for this uh, demo, I'll essentially uh, read the data from catalog since these videos are connected, intertwined with each other. So here, if you observe um, my screen, uh, I'm giving it a name. Again, this can be anything. I can just say read DF. So 
here i'm creating a glue dynamic frame i'm reading from a database called learn db the table name is sawmill data and here i'm just giving it some name doesn't really matter as i said so i'll, I'll put this one here and then i'm gonna run this so what this does it essentially since my data is on s3 and we have catalog it's gonna go and read the data for me now what i'll do is i'm gonna convert uh, um, glue dynamic dynamic frame So I'm gonna convert the glue dynamic frame to a spark frame and you do that by using the word 2DF. Now, since it's a spark data frame, now I can essentially do um, pretty much all my commands. Uh, I can just save this in um, DF, uh, let it run and then I'm gonna run it again. So I'm gonna run it again. And now I can say dot show, dot print schema, dot head, dot tail, all that commands I could easily run. Here you can see it's my data frame, right? Um, so I'll just do, here i just want to see the first two uh, uh, items this is a spark data frame right now i can do all my stuff right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna combine first name and last name and i'm gonna create a hash so for example i want to remove dupli duplicates right so for example if the name is sawmill and the last name is Shah, we'll pass this to a hash function and this will basically generate a hash and if the same name comes here again the hash will be same which means it's a duplicate and then i'm simply going to drop um, all the duplicate values okay i'm doing this to show you the spark syntax as well so <laughs> okay we do have the spark data frame which is great now i could also run all again we have done this in part two we can run print schema um, all these stuff right so i'm gonna say i think my name was uh, df so i'm gonna say it. uh wait wait, wait. Uh, this i don't need that it's already a, a data frame so now I, I should be able to run this and here you can see it did print the schema right perfect now what we gotta do now i'm gonna remove the duplicate so i'm gonna first import these uh, 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 functions so i'm gonna import hashlib it's a built-in python module and then i'm gonna import uh, import a udf and a concat function okay so now what i'm gonna do is i'll uh, show you what i'm trying to do here I'm defining a function called hasher and again this will take um, a string and the job is basically to create a, a hash function or a hash value right so it's going to perform an md5 hash and, 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 and that's pretty much it right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the first name so observe i'm going to take first name last name combine and then generate a hash okay and again there's a drop uh, duplicates but i want to do this through this way because you s it essentially helps you to you know uh, get a better grip on your sparks uh, syntax right since you know you guys are a beginner here right so now here this function right here so i'm gonna copy this and try to paste it so here we are saying with column ddup hash we are saying create a new column called ddup hash apply this function called hasher and concat first name and last name into that and give an alias called ddup hash okay now if i run this cell i will show you how the out outcome is so I, I will do a show at the end so hopefully uh i should have done show too but uh, it's fine uh that's taking a while okay yeah so if you observe it for basically for each row it did make a dedupe hash for me so let me just do two of them so it's easier so basically we generated a hash for first name and last name right now wherever the hash is same i know it's a duplicate right so i could easily drop that right so now i can uh, say for example this right drop duplicates you can also do fill na if you want to uh, you know work with na and you know want to do all that so now i am saying that hey um, so before that i want to show you how many rows are there so i will do a count and i guess it's 12 yeah 12 now i'm essentially dropping all the um, uh, duplicates on this column called ddu hash okay so now i'll run this command okay and then i'm gonna say df new count and here i should have now um six i guess yeah six now once this is ready now we need to write into s3 you have done all your cleansing part and now i want to write the data to s3 so we need to convert the spark data frame back into a glue data frame right glue dynamic frame so i'm gonna use a specific word okay so uh, for that i'll be using uh, uh, this uh, line here so i'm gonna show you that quickly 
So from glue dynamic frame, import dynamic frame. I'll import that here. And then I'm gonna uh, convert my spot data frame back to a dynamic frame. Over here, so as you can see, I'm gonna zoom in. Dynamic frame from DF and I'm passing my uh, data frame object, right? Now this is my dynamic frame, okay? Now we are all set and we can write this back to an S3. So I'm gonna copy this one and I'll show you the, the command. So here now we are saying, you know, glue context dot write dynamic frame. We are going to write the dynamic frame. We are using a from option and I'm essentially writing it into an S3. So the connection type is S3. The format is going to be JSON, right? And I'm saying, uh, I'm going to do clean, right? So I'm saying that write the data into a folder called clean. Okay. And if I, uh, hold on one sec, this is a problem here. This name should be my dynamic frame okay so now if i run this and if i go back to my s3 uh, i'm just gonna go back to my s3 and remember my s3 bucket is glue beginners right so i'm gonna so over here glue for beginners uh, what you see now here is a cleanse folder that the glue job generated for us right so this is basically uh, generated by we, we ran the cell right so this is a very basic way right to essentially um, you know again i wanted to show you step by step how to read a data from a glue catalog we converted that into a spark data frame we did some uh, stuff and then we converted it back into a glue data frame that is a dynamic frame and then we wrote, uh, essentially write that into uh, s3 if you click on script, this will give you all the code that we essentially used here, right? So you can now copy paste the code. And in the next part, what I'm gonna do, the next part is gonna be uh, writing infrastructure code to deploy the code that we wrote in the part um, five. So all this code that we wrote, we're gonna write an infrastructure code. So we're gonna um, uh, use serverless framework to deploy our glue script crawlers and database everything uh, we're going to do that in the next part and after that we're going to write glue workflow to schedule jobs and uh, trigger them on a, on a cron and after that it's going to be whenever a job fails you want to receive notification and so on so thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next upcoming parts